Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. It has been a month since we bought the new small fish, well, four weeks, four weeks to the day. And I wanted to let you know how we're getting on. I wanted to give you a general update of all the new fish we got on the last order and how the little ones are growing specifically, but we'll do a tour of the fish room in general. But as a little reminder, I'll put up some video now of the fish when I first got them. So these are them on day one, after getting them into the tank, got some footage and it was a fairly easy, nice, straightforward order. There was no deaths, there was no sick fish. Everything looked good, everything was happy. Um, we got everyone in and there was no tricky feeding or behaviour or anything like that. Sometimes with new fish there are opportunities for problems to happen, but none of that happened with these ones. They all took to the water really well and they started eating really well. So now we can show you what they look like today and you can do a bit of a, a size comparison. We'll start with the discus. So these are the discus, obviously. Um, I don't know whether in editing I can do like a kind of side by side, but to my eyes, they are obviously bigger and um, they have considerably put on size and almost uniformly as well. There's only one I'd say there was uh, one that wasn't putting on size and that's this one here. He's the, the runt of the litter doing an epic poo at the moment. <laughs> that's a nice way to show off for the camera. Um, but yeah, so he's the one that's not putting on any size. And in any group of this size, I would expect at least one to be a bit of a runt. He's not going to be keeping up with everyone else. It's going to be a bit slower to food. Um, that's going to continually make him fall behind a little bit. Whereas if you compare him to some of these newer, bigger, larger ones, they're going to be first to food. So they will continue to put on um, size at a greater rate. And there's not really much I can do about this. It is what it is. Um, if I was to separate him and feed him specifically, that probably wouldn't work either because discus are a social fish. So they get something from being together in a group. Um, so we'd be stunt his growth if we were to separate him and his growth is going to be stunted by leaving him in here because the bigger fish are going to get most of the food. So it just kind of is what it is. As long as it doesn't present any health issues and his stunting doesn't make him unhealthy, I have no thoughts of culling or anything like that. If I was a breeder, possibly, because it's not going to end up being a saleable discus. Um, so you will just have to be the smaller discus. As long as he's healthy, then we'll be happy enough. But like I said, the rest of them are all doing really well. They're piling on the size, shape and pattern and colour are starting to come in more and more as they get bigger, which is really nice to see. And this one down here, I think, is probably my favourite at the moment. He certainly looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, all of them, really happy with them. I'm feeding them quite heavily. I'm feeding them with the soft Artemia food that I sell on my website. Quick plug, you can go and buy that yourself if you want to. Um, I find it is a fantastic food for all sizes of discus. Um, and in fact, I feed it throughout the fish room. So it does really well for me, really happy with it. But I'm also feeding them live foods. I'm feeding them black worm, feeding them daphnia, I'm feeding them whatever live food I have to hand. Um, I'm feeding them frozen foods, uh, they're getting quite the variety, but they're getting two or three feeds a day at this kind of size. Um, in this tank as well, I've got a couple of zebra danios, which they probably don't need to be in there anymore. I put them in there originally as kind of um, dither fish to make the fish feel more comfortable, but almost immediately they were all quite comfortable. Um, there's a few bristle nose pleco babies in there you can see one stuck in this stupid filter and um, they come and go out of that on their own so i've given up trying to rescue them from it um but they just keep uh tabs on cleanup and algae and stuff but i am doing regular water changes and when i say regular water changes for the discus especially at least once a day if not every other day at the moment i might only do a little bit but i will go in at the end of the day generally and scoop up any uneaten food uh, and that will maybe take, I don't know, 10 to 20% of the water volume every day. And every now and again, I will do a large water change because that is, in my experience, one of the things that has the biggest effect on growing discus. But as you can see, all doing well, all putting on food. And ultimately, when you're growing young fish, 
them eating readily and you keeping on top of the maintenance. That's, that's a very basic recipe. Uh, and for this group of fish, doing really well. Move on to the other tank. Not too much different, um, but mm, some, some issues. So in this tank, again, I will try and do a side by side, but if you look at here, we've got the Emperor Snakehead. Um, this is the Gordon replacement for those of us who have been here on the channel for a while. We had, have had him in here as well as the peacock bass. These are Kilberry bass. So you can see one there, one there. If my finger gets out of the way, you might be able to focus on them a little bit better. Um, we did have three of them, and until yesterday, we did have three of them. But, so this one, let me see if I can focus a little bit better. So when we got here, yes, Emperor Snakehead, he was a couple of centimetres long, five centimetres, something like that, maybe six. If that, he's now way over double that, if not more. He has put on some fantastic growth and has a fantastic appetite. The bass have done similar, so they have at least doubled in size as well. They're not quite keeping up with the growth rate of the snakehead. Um, and these two that are here are fairly similar. They have been keeping up with each other, but the third one was a little bit behind. He was lagging a little bit behind. I didn't think it was a risk or an issue, but yesterday the snakehead, when I came down and did my count, I was going, oh, I can only see two bass, and the snakehead has a massive lump in his belly. So I think that third one was taken as food. He's not shown any interest or aggression towards these two because they are quite a bit bigger than he was, so I think they're just too big for him now. So I don't think they're any threat, but if he continues to increase his size at a ratio much greater than the, the bass, I'll need to separate them at some point. So I'm going to have to keep a close eye on that. But the growth rate in these guys is brilliant. And in fact, not only the growth rate, the, the way they hunt and take food, it's really something to behold. Again, feeding them on all kinds of things, whether it be live food, frozen food, pellets, giving them as much of a mix so as they don't get dependent on one type of food. And they're doing it really well, taking it really well. They will grab food out of my hand as I try and put it in the tank. They will hunt the worms. They will fight each other to get to be at the food first and all the things that you want to see. So they are doing really well and really happy with these guys. In terms of the rest of the fish room, um, so just for a change, we're in a bit of a state of disrepair and disarray. Uh, <laughs> I'm moving everything around and I guess it's all related to the last video that I released and um, you might have seen, I'll show you this. This is Mega Tank, this is my large DIY aquarium, which I like to tell everyone every time I show it, is eight foot by four foot by three feet and I battle it myself. Um, this is Brian, Brian is my giant Grammy and he is currently suspect number one for the murder of two of his tank mates. Um, or a murder, an attempted murder. The murder of the flag tail, which I showed in a previous video, which I will link up there somewhere. And attempted murder of an Oscar. An Oscar, which is recovering well. I've moved them into this larger tank now. This is the grow out tank for mega tank inhabitants. So there's a few smaller silver dollars in there and a couple of other things, but the Oscar's in there recovering well. I've moved them from a small hospital tank to recover in there, but I don't want to put them back in mega tank in case Brian is a murderer and decides to have a second go and finish the job. So I'm not entirely what I'm going to do about this. Um, the responses to the last video were, well, Garamis are well-known aggressive fish. They should really just be kept alone. Um, but I've had him for, what, a year or so and he's never shown any aggression. I've been filming this tank constantly, looking for aggression, either it lights out or lights up or through the night uh, and nothing. So I don't know if that is true or not. And I'm also not the kind of fish keeper to just move fish around all the time or move them along, buying and selling and get rid of. When I get a fish, I want to keep it for life. So I want to keep Brian for life. So I'm considering options, which is why we've got tanks everywhere and all kinds of things going on. Um, this is my discus tank over there. So this is a potential, this is potential number one for a house for Brian, because it's a five foot tank. Um, just next to where I work and do my day job from is that we strip this down, clear it out, and this becomes Brian's tank. It's just about big enough to keep him in um, if he was the only thing in it. And most of the Garami tanks that I see are essentially bare tanks with nothing in it other than a substrate. 
So that should give enough space for him to be happy enough. Again, we would need to monitor that, but then move the discus and everything else to another tank somewhere else. And that's why I'm moving things around and trying some stuff. So at the moment I've got these two tanks here and I'm thinking I want to move the discus into, they don't need a four foot tank necessarily. I could probably get away with a five foot tank necessarily. I could probably get away with a four foot. So if I get rid of this fridge, that leaves me a four foot span here. And if I swap around that shelving unit and this shelving unit, and that gives me a little bit more space here, which lets me get in to there. Uh, I've just started setting up these tanks as well as a replacement plant station. But then thinking this tank goes up top there with another tank and that can be more of a display or I just put more plant holding tanks up there. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just doing lots of, well, if I move this here, I move that there. These two tanks going there next to the radiator would fill that gap a bit better. Moving that uh, white shelving unit here instead of the Kallax would give me better access into there. And then if I have a large four foot tank here, maybe even two on a rack and here, that give me more options again. So that's currently the problem number one is, what exactly do I do? Um, lots of options, none of them very appealing because they all mean moving very large tanks around, which is always fun. Um, but, you know, they're animals, they, they are our commitment. We need to look after them. So, thinking them through. The other fish that we got on the order, they're all doing fine as well. I just, I've been too busy to get around to doing anything with them. So we've got the 50 White Cloud Mountain Minnows in here, 10 of the um, Flying Silver Foxes in here, doing all right. There's my breeding pair of discus who keep laying eggs, but aren't getting any further than that. So we've had two or three lays since they've been in here. But I'm not worried about that yet because it does take them a while before they get it right, especially after being moved around. My only concern is that I've picked the wrong two discus and I've got two females. <laughs> but we'll see how we got on with that. Other than that, and just being in a mild state of panic at moving things around, everything's going pretty well. Um, I have had some doubts about Megatank and whether or not just to give up altogether and use this space more efficiently for some still large tanks, just not enormous tanks. Um, I have, just to be completely honest, offered Brian to a couple of people who have shown some interest, um, but I am, <laughs> I will sadly give him up, um, but I am more of the type of person that will keep a fish for its entire life. That's just kind of the way that I want to, that's how I want to do my hobby. I'm nothing against people who don't and move them more often, that, that's also fine. Um, but if somebody does have a big tank and can look after Brian, um, get in touch we, we can talk um because i did talk about my ultimate goal for this one day being an enormous discus tank um but i've got a whole life cycle of fish to get through before i get there so there will be many many years before we convert this to a discus tank unless i do something more drastic and say decision made we're giving up on these fish because Megatank has got Brian, all these silver dollars, the Severum, the Oscar, more silver dollars, more, another goby thing, some peacock bass, another giant snake head. So for them to live their entire lifespan in this tank, it'll be many years before we get thinking about moving it into a discus tank. It'll just be, this'll be Megatank with the big predators and big impressive fish. And at this rate, every other tank filled with discus, which, hey, I'm not adverse to. Anyway, if you want to come along for that journey and see that happen, um, come and join me on a Friday night at 9pm UK time. We usually do a live stream. We can have some fun and games, but also a chance to talk about any of these um, issues, problems, opportunities, whatever you want to call them. Um, click the subscribe button. That's always useful because something like... 60% of the people who watch my videos don't actually subscribe, which blows my mind given the amount of subscribers that I've had as new subscribers recently. So thank you for that if you're one of those ones. Um, yeah, that's it. See you in the next one. Bye.